and welcome back. Now today we're going to be looking at this little uh, bootloader device, something that helps you burn a bootloader onto your Arduino. Now this is aimed at beginners, all right? So if you're a beginner in the Arduino world and you're thinking bootloaders, you've got to be kidding me. Don't run away screaming. It's really not that difficult. And more to the point, there's a very good reason why this could come in very, very handy. Not least if you've been watching the recent set of videos I've been doing, we can control our little Arduino to run without an external crystal, for example, uh, which saves you some uh, some components as per this device here, uh, which means you can run it on a battery for weeks, if not months at a time. OK, so it is easy. Whilst um, there could be a lot going on under the hood, as it were, we're not going to cover that. OK, so when we're talking about bootloaders, we're not going to talk about how to write one, not in this video anyway. But we will show you how easy it is to use this device. Now, in a previous video, I showed how we would use another Arduino like this to program a further Arduino. I know. So if we have this Arduino here, for example, say this was the one we wanted to uh, upload a bootloader to, we'd use this one with a special program in it. That one would be connected to this one and it would burn a bootloader from here to here. And then this one would have its bootloader loaded and everything would be hunky dory. Except, of course, it, it, it was a little bit a little bit string and chewing gum in the sense that you know there were cables running backwards and forwards not not a lot i think it was four in total but i can see from a beginner's viewpoint it could look a little bit off-putting so what we're going to do is dispense with that and um oh, there it is use this instead and this is a shield that just plugs in over the top of this one if i get it the wrong way around like that and uh, it just makes it so much easier and neater and the program that um, uploads the bootloader into the chip well that chip there at the moment we're going to move it from that breadboard into here um, the program that runs on the underlying arduino to program that one um, has a few nice things added to it it's a bit more sophisticated basically so you can tell that it's working it reminds me a little bit of the AT tiny 85 series I did a while ago now that sort of had a a nice little um, uploader as well with a heartbeat LED so you knew it was running and this one's got one as well that you can make it out it's got a little heartbeat so that pulses to let you know things are working and it beeps when it's done it a couple of times it beeps so um, yeah it's fine and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And it can, of course, unbrick your Arduino. If you've done something silly with it and it just won't accept a program anymore, by uploading or re-uploading a bootloader, it can get it all back into sync again. I've done that a couple of times. Also, also on this board, you can see that there's a standard uh, six-pin ICSP header here and a 10-pin as well which means we can program the chip on here once it's got its bootloader on it um, via a standard serial stroke USB converter. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's have a look at how much this device would cost you. And believe me, it's not a lot. And it's just, it's just worth getting for that time when you might need it once in a year. OK, so let's have a look at that first. Right, I got it from AliExpress this time then. And as you can see, it was uh, £2.90 and free shipping to the UK. Now, it's a little bit unfortunate, would you believe, that um, it's actually on special offer or was on special offer at the time I got it. Because as you can see there, let me just uh, flip to it. As you can see here, it says um, uh, £2.90, discount three days left. Well. Wow. That means by the time you get to see this video, that will probably be a week or more ago. So, but don't um, don't give up because this this particular uh, bootloader is available just about anywhere, and I'd be very surprised if you couldn't get it for a very good price. Um, certainly, you know, down about the three pound mark. That's probably what four dollars ish, something like that. And it really is. Um, I mean, it's simple. That's why it's cheap. I mean, there's not a lot. Uh, going on on it. It's a ZIF socket. Um, there's a beeper. That header, I can't even remember if that header there came with it or not. I put that on myself. These pins definitely I put on myself. That one came with it, the six pin one. <clears throat> uh, 
Well, that's it really. I mean, it's got a crystal here ready for the, the actual thing to run. But there's not a lot going on there, but it is a very neat board. And of course, a zip socket, in case you're not familiar actually, and not everybody is, let's face it, a zip socket allows me to put that chip, so I can pluck that chip there and put it in here and then just close that up so it grabs all those little legs. And then when you're done, you just open it and the thing will fall out quite literally. You'll see in a minute, we'll, we'll do all that. Okay. Anyway, back to the... Um, Back to where I got it from. Right, so two pound ninety, I got it for. Um, you could you could bound to pick it up for you know three pound twenty, three pound thirty, maybe something like that, without any kind of discount. But I say keep your eyes open for discounts like this. Remember, AliExpress. The whole point about AliExpress is that it's a bit like um, the eBay of the far eastern market. I mean, there are dozens, hundreds, thousands, probably of vendors who are part of that. And they all vie for your business. So if one of them's doing a discount, others will. And if one doesn't, some will. So you'll probably get a good deal. Anyway, so there it is. That's how much it cost. Two pound ninety. I thought, yeah, for that I'm I'm gonna buy it. Why wouldn't I? It's the price of a cup of coffee. In fact, less than. Perhaps I'll just go to expensive coffee houses, I don't know. Anyway, so that's that, okay? Um and I've got no no relationship with AliExpress other than as a customer. Right, uh, let's have a look at the, the code then, because as part of this, in fact, if we just scroll down, you might see something. Let's have a look. Uh, here we are. Now this, oh, no, that's something else. It's trying to sell me. So what it's saying is here, I'm not going to read all this out or even go through it, but basically it's saying if you use the program that comes with this particular board, and this is made by... Um, Open Smart. Okay, you just about see it there. Open Smart. Um, they they've written a sketch that basically is described here at the um, how it works. But you'll see how it works in a minute. And um, it's it's quite nice. I was I was pleasantly surprised that um, you know it's, it was a fair bit of quality coming out of uh, China actually. So there we are. I think that's it. Oh, that's some decent pictures. Look. In fact, that one says. Oh look, that one says DIY more. It's a different different brand entirely to the one they shipped me but anyway I've got the um, the code that came with this one the the sketch which we might as well have a look at now let's go over to the code window here we are so this is the sketch that comes with this I say comes with I think you have to follow a link or something I can't remember now exactly but basically this this sketch and it's it's, it's, it's an absolutely standard Arduino sketch, all right. So it's defined. It's got a setup. Uh, it's got a loop somewhere. If we can find it somewhere in here. It has. You know, there's the loop. Okay. So <clears throat> it's a it's a it's a nice little sketch though. It's sophisticated enough. And what it does, um, it it uploads onto say that Arduino at the back there, right? So that then is running the sketch you're now seeing on screen. You don't have to understand it or anything else, it just it just acts as a bootloader from that point on. So having uploaded it to that Arduino, say, we then plug this on top and we can burn the bootloader into any chip or AT Mega 328P chip we, we put in here and that's it, end of. No wires, no nothing. In fact, let's go and do that next. I think it's time we had a demo. Right, so all I've done now is uh, pulled that chip from out the breadboard where I was playing about with it, and we're going to put it into here. Which of it does, of course, raise an interesting question, doesn't it? Um, this can obviously only be used for chips like this, which are on Arduino boards like this. Now, I did say in a video or two ago that it's highly unlikely you're going to get a board like this anymore. You're more likely to get a board like that one down there, where you've got a, a surface mount um, AT Mega328 in the middle. All right, rather than a chip like this. This is how they used to come years ago. But I found out that you can still get them like this. Um, I don't know why, but, well, obviously they're still made, which is great for us because it means we can play about with things. And, of course, if things do go wrong, we can always do things to that chip as well. So have a look around. I think um, Amazon make these, uh, well, not make them, they supply them from a, a Chinese supplier as well, if I remember rightly. Anyway, that's that. So we're going to concentrate on this chip, though, so this is the shield that we're going to plug into this Arduino. 
and it literally these these prongs here just plug straight into that this is the chip how do you identify which goes to which well where the handle is uh, you need pin one so if we look at this really closely we can probably just make out you see that little half moon indentation at the top of the chip there and the dot up there that identifies pin one so that simply drops into there and I'm I literally drops okay there's no force this is a zero insertion force socket so literally it just falls in floats about and the idea is just to apply a little bit of pressure on the top there while you clamp it down that's it it's in and it won't won't fall out now all right but if you would release the handle and turn it upside down it would fall out so that's great so that's that's in and now all we've got to do is plug this into here uh, which I'm going to do off camera because obviously I've got to line all the pins up and things and um, then we can start uh, programming right back in just a jiffy right there we are all done all nice and solid so this plugs into this and it's the underlying one the Arduino that's now been covered up that we're going to be using as a sort of an intelligent um, uploader to this chip okay using the sketch that is supplied with this open smart board and which you saw right let's connect this up then um, well the Arduino underneath connect that up to my PC and uh, let's see what settings we need to program it right we'll plugged it in and it's registered so if we have a look at the um, ports setting on my Windows computer you'll see that I do have I have one single entry there for USB com 22 now for those of you with eagle eyes and this doesn't account towards the eagle eyes award of the video um, you notice that I used to have a com 3 there with some Intel advanced I can't remember what it was AMT or something now luckily um, one of you guys and it's fat let me get the very person up here here we are crazy ape has given me um, a good heads up as to why I was getting that and um, well frankly I did what he says I rebooted I showed something um, that says active management technology when I rebooted there I'll AMT I found an entry in my BIOS it wasn't described um, it wasn't anything in fact but I unset it, rebooted, and lo and behold, my COM port 3, this unknown thing doing something, has gone. And my PC still runs as it always did, so I'm guessing no bad things are going to happen to me. So thanks very much for that, Crazy Ape. Great stuff. Right, so anyway, we're back to um, this particular board, and it's got one COM port on there and COM22. So if we fire up the Arduino IDE and go over to the code window, there it is. So this is the code now that comes with this board, right? And there will be a link on my GitHub and below this video where you can grab this. So uh, no panic about what it's doing. But we're going to basically upload this. Now the question is, what are the settings? Because it's, as a beginner, I'm putting my beginner's hat on now, you're looking at this and going, well, there's, there's sort of two things going on here, isn't there? There's one on top, one underneath. What you're doing is not doing anything with this top one at the moment. In fact, we could, we could even take this one off, right? because what we're actually doing is programming this in exactly the normal way that we do things. Nothing to do with bootloads at this stage. This is just uploading a sketch to this board, okay? And the sketch being the one that you're seeing on screen now. And that sketch will eventually upload a bootloader to whatever we plug into this, okay? So just just got to keep that nice and straight. Now, as it happens, the thing on here is already that bootloader because that's what I've been playing about with. Um, but we'll do it again just to prove it all works, okay, and see if we can get any error messages. As always happens when I do these videos, you do it 10 times while you're playing about, sorry, doing intensive research and development, and um, then it all goes wrong when you actually video it. Right, let me um, bring up the uh, window so I can see what I'm doing here. Right, okay. Right, let's have a look at the settings then now that we're on my um, monitor view. So on the tools, we've, we've selected the correct, the correct board. Um, we found COM22. Um, we don't want this as a program, and that's, that's for a future video. We're not going down that road just yet. Uh, we're selecting AVR ISP Mark II. I think um, AVR ISP would work too, actually, but there we are. Okay, 
So that's all selected. Nothing else to do? No, we're not doing that. And we're not burning the bootloader at this stage. Nothing, nothing to do with that. We're just burning a sketch or uploading a sketch to, to this device here. All right, so that's it. There's, there's nothing more else we can do with that apart from saying, upload it, please. And off it goes. In fact, the window's a bit small there. Let's go back to the code window and you'll see it compiling and doing stuff. There we are. And there you can see it at the bottom. Look in this area here. And off it goes. Now, look, pretty quick. Thank you. Well, it's done. It was that quick. OK, so it's a very small sketch. So basically, it's uploaded the sketch to here, um, supplied by the OpenSmart people, to which this plugs in, although I suspect, given that the vendor is now selling or has photographed a different version of this at one stage, whether it's now or, or in, in the past, I'm guessing it's it's not made by them at all. It's just handed around, isn't it? Right, let me plug this in again without blowing anything up, and uh, I'll be right back. Right, there we are. Plug that in. Oh, there we are. Now we've got a light. Let me flip back to the um, workbench view. Right, so we see here <clears throat> this little light flashing that says heartbeat. Okay, so that's, that's supposed to give you confidence that the program underneath is working and waiting for you to uh, do something. So, how do we burn a bootloader onto this? Let's just assume we want to burn the standard 8 megahertz bootloader. That means we can run it on here without a crystal. Never mind about where that bootloader comes from. That will all be described in a future video. Remember, let's keep it simple and to the point here, right? I'll supply you with a file in the GitHub and in the a link um, in the video below this for um, a, a, a file well, it's a folder actually that you just place in a particular place. I'll show you where it is. And in fact, it's from Arduino themselves, Arduino CC, and it's all described on their page. But let's just let's just do it for now. Okay, right. So what we're going to do is go to the code window again. Now um, we're not going to upload this sketch anymore. We're done with this sketch. But what we are going to tell it tell that Arduino, the underlying one under there, is to burn the bootloader to this one. And the way we do that is as follows. I'm going to have to go back to the monitor. Right, so what we do, we say tools. What board have we got? Well, basically, what chip have we got? And it is a standard Arduino, just as well. And uh, if we chose this one, it's not going to work. Well, it would work, but it, it would upload the wrong bootloader because we've installed a new description for a bootloader. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom of this huge, bong, big, long list, uh, we'll see it. Right, you can now see that entire long list. And it is a long list because I've got lots of boards installed on here. If I scroll right down to the bottom, you can see that there. Now, it's been truncated, but you'll see the full title in a minute. And that says, let me just zoom in on that in the video. You can see it says 80 mega 328 on a breadboard, 8 megahertz. Oh, truncated. Well, let's select it anyway because that is the right one. And then we can go back to tools when it's... Uh, you see it's in blue. It took a little while to figure it out, and there it is. That says the board, 80 mega 328 on a breadboard, 8 megahertz internal clock. That's correct, because we want this chip to run on its own internal clock without any crystal. Right, well, we'll select that. That's selected. It's on COM22. Um, we're using the Arduino as an ISP now, though. So basically, the Arduino under here is going to be used to upload it, so it's just instructions being sent to it. Uh, so we select that. And then we say, burn bootloader, simple as that, which is just a series of instructions given to this board now, and it will run this the program to upload the, boot, the bootloader itself into here. Right, let's uh, click that. Off it goes. One beep. Second beep. At least I hope my camera picked that up. That's it, done. So this chip, this Arduino chip, AT Mega328, now has the bootloader on it. But what does that mean exactly? As a beginner, I can sort of remember back that far, and indeed when I was doing pick work, this whole idea of, of a bootloader and uploading sketch was a little bit, little bit hazy. So let me just draw out very quickly on a whiteboard 
what we mean by having uploaded a bootloader. Time for a little drawing, I think. So within your ATmega328P, you have a block of memory. It's built into the chip itself, and we depict it normally as this sort of rectangular area, right? This is where your code gets uploaded to. There's 32K of memory space, except for the little bit right at the top of the uh, flash memory, uh, and that space itself is variable, <clears throat> this is where your bootloader goes. Now, the size of that can vary, and in the old days it was probably about 2K, and then some clever people decided that's far too big and inefficient, we're not having that anymore, we'll write something called OptiBoot, which is much smaller, and now it takes up something like 512 bytes, so that's a lot smaller. Um, but you can adjust this bootloader size. There, is, there are various steps when you upload the bootloader to say it is this big. Okay, that's well and good. So your bootloader is uploaded at the very top of your memory so that your program code, your sketch, if you like, goes in here in this direction. Starts at the bottom and works its way up. All right? Now, obviously, when it hits this point here, the memory is full and you'll get an error message saying sorry the program's too big it can't fit but that rarely happens and if it did well then we're into realms of saying well actually do we even need a bootloader for this particularly huge program but that's for another day so what is the bootloader then well basically what happens is when your AT mega starts up so either starts up or somebody presses the reset button where does the code normally execute from? Well, by default, it would execute right at the bottom of your memory, which is hex uh, 0000, and your program would start. Except that that's not particularly useful if you have a, got a bootloader loaded and you want that to kick in first, because this bootloader needs to take control of your Arduino initially, in order to be able to upload further programs in here. Otherwise, let's take this example. We have a program already loaded, and you press reset. It's going to jump up to here and start executing your program. Well, how do you ever get another program loaded up? Well, the answer is, of course, you tell the Arduino, don't start from here when we press start or reset. So instead of going there, no, we don't want to do that. We want to start from where the bootloader starts every single time. And the bootloader is a little tiny sketch all by itself. And basically what it says is, is there a sketch why trying to be uploaded at this very minute? And it'll have a look at the serial port on your USB port normally. And it will say, yes, there is. I'm now going to start grabbing those bytes one by one and putting your new code over here, overwriting whatever was there before. And it will start filling up the memory. And that's what you see on the screen with those little dots or hashes, whatever it is now, I can't remember. And then it says, I've done that. And then it says, now, having run the bootloader and uploaded your program, I'm now going to jump to the beginning of your code. Now, if, at the other hand, it says, I've started my bootloader running. Is there a program waiting to be uploaded? No, there's not. Well, we just simply skip around all that stuff and go immediately to the top of the program. That's not a very good arrow, is it? There we are. So your bootloader is a little tiny program right in the, at the top of your memory that you don't have to worry about. And all it does is monitor whether you're trying to upload a sketch or not. Okay, and as part of the bootloader upload process, automatically and behind the scenes, we change the address, the start address of your execution, not from the beginning of your program, but from the beginning of the bootloader. Ah, you say, hang on a minute, if I press reset then and it starts running here instead of here, isn't there going to be a little delay while it tries to figure out what's going on? And the answer is yes, there is a very tiny delay. The bootloader has to, of course, check to see something's coming in on the serial port and determine, no, it's not, I'm going to go here, or yes, there is, I'm going to start writing all these little bytes up here for more sketch. But that delay is is tiny, absolutely tiny, okay? So I don't have to worry about that. So that's what your bootloader is doing. It's monitoring what's happening on the serial port and will start writing these bytes into your memory for your new program. 
Now, of course, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're not uploading, we're just running. So it comes into here. The bootloader says, no, there's nothing on the serial port. It's just a few instructions, and it will immediately start executing where it would have done by default had we not got a bootloader in here. And when you think about it, lots of programs, you know, commercial programs, they're just loaded into, say, your washing machine microcontroller, right? There's no bootloader in your micro uh, microcontroller in your washing machine or tumble dryer or air conditioning unit. It just immediately starts executing from there because the manufacturer's already programmed this in, doesn't need a bootloader. And we can do the same, but that's that's for a, for a future subject, not now. Okay, that's what the bootloader is. It, I know it's simplified, and I haven't really sort of delved into too much detail here, but at least it gives you an idea that in your Arduino, unknown to you perhaps, there's already a little tiny program loaded up that all it does is monitor the serial ports. Right, enough of this. Let's get on with the real work. Right, so that is exactly what a bootloader does and why we need it for the most part, but you can do without it, and we'll cover that. Uh, in a future video probably because I don't think there's enough time in this one but we've uploaded now the bootloader into here so at least now we can plug this into here and then connect this via the USB port to your computer and the bootloader will take control every time you press restart uh, yeah, reset or start it up you know power it up from scratch and the bootloader says is there something trying to come down here and if there is I'm going to upload it into flash otherwise I'm going to execute that program so what can we do with this one now then? This has got the bootloader attached to it, but what's, what would happen if we plug that into here, for example? Well, the answer is absolutely nothing because we haven't got a program in here yet, have we? But what we can do with this one is now upload a sketch. So having got your bootloader loaded, I think it's time we swapped that chip in there for that one there and to make sure we can actually upload something to it. Right, there it is, plugged in. Oh, there's a little window sound. I don't know if the microphone picked that up or not, but this is now powered up. So let's get rid of this one. We don't need this anymore. And now we're just going to concentrate on this. So this little sketch, it's a double blink one. This is something that I tend to use rather than the standard blink one because it's just the standard blink one can often come preloaded and you can't prove that things are running okay. So there's nothing fancy about this. As you can see, it's just a double blink. Right, so I've plugged the chip into this breadboard, carefully getting the pins lined up so you don't misalign the power to some other pin. Not that I'd ever do that. I didn't do that just a minute ago at all. <clears throat> no, no, I always line them up very, very carefully. Luckily, my power supply has a current limiter on it, so the minute it, it started to flash and limit the power, I thought, hang on. So I actually misaligned the pins. Anyway, it's lined up now, though. So if I connect power... To here oh now look straight away you can see that that flashing right now let me get just get a little swatch a filter swatch so we can see this LED flashing the correct shade of red right if I put um, a little bit of filter gel over this you'll be able to see that red light a lot better in red not white that's great so a big shout out to um, Lee filters actually sent me this swatch as a result of John Adler's post which you probably saw there it is on screen now so thanks John for that I finally did manage to pluck up the courage to ask them for this and you get a massive set of filters look swatches um, and it really does make things look a lot more like the real LED color now I've just picked a couple of random ones here I could probably do it better but that's the principle right so we can see that is double blinking and I think you can also tell that it is double blinking once a second, not once every two seconds or once every half a second. So the speed of this chip is correct in the sense that although we're running on 8 megahertz, the delay and everything else is still 100% as it should be. Cool. Okay, well that's it then. We've proven we can upload a bootloader. From that bootloader, we've proven we can upload a sketch. And thirdly, we've proven that we can run it without the crystal and two capacitors or indeed the ceramic resonator that you'd normally have on these chips so you could be asking the questions well why why have the crystal on there anyway in that case why make it overly complex three more components three more tiny components it must be said well this is now running at half speed isn't it so if you've got a lot of work to do it's going to take twice as long or if you're running in a robot car for example you might be scanning lots of sensors, lots of distance sensors, LED sensors, trying to do camera work, who knows? Uh, so it can only get through half the amount of work as it is. But if all you're interested in is 
uh, waking up every I don't know five minutes or ten minutes and saying take a temperature reading and log it or something then this is going to be perfect isn't it 8 megahertz or 60 megahertz makes no difference to the actual running of the program so 8 megahertz is fine not only have we saved three components it takes far less power now 8 megahertz cool right so what we're going to do then is uh, put this to sleep now what I'm going to have to do is uh, touch one of the pins at the back here it's citizen pack pin 14 GPIO pin I think that's eight let me just double check that yep double that's the GPIO pin eight which is physical pin 14 so if I touch this one at the back here watch the um, multimeter display that should drop like a like a stone well if I ever get it touched here there we go right so that's now in sleep mode and we're taking 19.3 microamps now the voltage I've got on here is actually 4.07 why that funny figure well what was happening is that I was trying to get down as low as I could and I got down to like 3.45 uh, below which it would not run uh, the speed is still too high if you want to go down to 1.8 you'd probably be running at 1 megahertz or something like that I suspect so for the internal oscillator to work um, it's well 3.45 so what I can do is uh, wake it up by touching uh, physical pin 5 which is the um, interrupt pin here and there we see it going now you, it's difficult to see the flash actually on camera but if I hold my fingers there you'll actually see it reflecting better on my fingers than anything else so that's it that's the lowest I can do it with a standard internal oscillator now at least I can disassemble this and uh, start creating the video from the beginning. Good. So there we are. I think that sort of brings us to the end really of this uh, video. Now I know I've glossed over some points regarding the bootloader process and uh, simplified various things and I haven't really gone into too much detail of how we could write say our own bootloader but this is this is aimed at the beginner and perhaps how you might be able to rescue your chip if you've bricked it or something. But it also gives you an insight of what the bootloader is actually doing on here and that's an important fundamental step to understanding understanding future videos where we might uh, play about a little bit more sorry do more in-depth research and development into custom bootloaders and the like so um, in the meantime we'll discard the uh, the crystal and two capacitors we'll keep this blinking as it is and think about what else we might be able to do now that we have this newfound knowledge of chip manipulation with bootloaders and sketches and answer the fundamental question do we really need a bootloader i think you probably guessed the answer to that but that's for some time in the future all right thanks for watching and see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching